Hi there, my name is Dina Falcone. I'm an herbalist, educator, the author of Foraging and Feasting and Earthly Bodies and Heavenly Hair. And I just released my new online course, wildfoodhealthboosters.com. But what are we doing here in this humid June day here in the Mid-Hudson Valley of New York in this swampy, ferny zone? We are going to connect you to an amazing mushroom, Ganoderma tsuge, that is the hemlock reishi or the hemlock varnish shelf. What's amazing about this mushroom? It's considered the mushroom of longevity. It's a long life mushroom. It's got a heavy name, meaning there's a lot of power that's attributed to this mushroom, but let's just break it down a little bit. This is uh, woodland uh, immune medicine. And basically what does it do is it's an immunomodulator. So it helps us to deal with stress. So we handle stress that comes our way, whether it's pollen or it's poison or it's a nervous system stress. So Ganoderma tsuge offers immunomodulating and anti-inflammatory action, which translates into a healthy long life, if you know what I mean. So where are you gonna find this plant? What's its native range? It is native to North America, uh, all the way into the Midwestern, into the mid Midwestern states, yep, and then down into Appalachia. So east of the Rocky Mountains, um, it does jump over, and who is its host? So Ganoderma tsuge uh, grows on a very specific host. The host is tsuga, which means uh, hemlock. It means eastern hemlock. So Ganoderma tsuge means shiny skin that grows on the eastern hemlock. And so that is what we have right here. We have this beautiful shiny skin that grows on hemlock. By the way, in terms of growing, it is USDA uh, hardiness from four to seven, and its substrate, again, is typically hemlocks, eastern hemlocks. That's Tsuga canadensis, that's the tree host. It's usually dying or dead. So this is a saprobic mushroom. That means that it helps to decay and decompose this already dead hemlock. However, it also attacks or lives on living trees. So it is also parasitic. So just as a note, what else to say about this mushroom in terms of habitat? You're going to look for it in um, rocky ledges, in ravines, in moist soils. Um, in mountainous areas, in, in, yeah. So I think that, that gives you the habitat. Let's get, uh, let's give you a view of what's happening on this stump, which is pretty amazing. I hope you can see Ganoderma tsuge of the Polyporaceae family. Likes to grow uh, either singly or in overlapping shelves. So you can see that it's solitary, and sometimes it's actually quite a few more that come out of one point. These are called shelves, and it's in this kidney, kidney to fan-shaped shape. And the size of this mushroom can range anywhere from like two inches all the way to 12 inches. So they can get quite large, 13 inches even. So you've got this um, variation. Okay. Come have a look at more examples over here. Here's one that's emerging out. It's younger and you can see that this margin, this zone is quite a bit lighter. As it matures, that zone kind of disappears, although you can still see some lightness in this. But again, as these get darker, I mean, as they mature, they get darker typically and they lose that light, creamy, mustardy uh, zone. So you're just seeing some nice examples of more mature, uh, middle, and then younger. Let's go over here. I'll show you some other ones. So this fallen hemlock, this dead Tsuga canadensis, is the host of many beautiful Ganoderma tsugais, these mushrooms. They're all along. So here you can see these Ganoderma tsugais just beautifully adorning, helping decompose 
these eastern hemlocks that are already dead. By the way, Ganoderma tsuge is a close relative of Ganoderma lucidum, but it is not the same as Ganoderma lucidum, which is the revered mushroom in Chinese medicine. This is a very close cousin, just as a note. Um, yeah. Let's have you come up and, and look more closely at all the different uh, shapes and colors that this mushroom can have, because it can vary. Here's a great example of overlapping shelves, and this mushroom does love to encompass wood and ferns, so whatever is there will just grow around it. Um, but so you can see here that we have um, a orangish brownish zone. These are zones, kind of lumpy zones here. And then the margins become more mustardy yellow and creamy. And you can see here's the stalk. It's not much of a stalk. And that, yep, sometimes that stalk is longer and sometimes it doesn't exist at all. But that's an example, a beautiful example here. Let me show you another one. Here's another example, a smaller one that's actually younger. Totally worth harvesting, all of the ones I've showed you so far. And you can see that this stalk is a bit longer. And um, I'm not sure if you can see that right there. Can you see that? <laughs> but that color, that's actually not happening, but that's also part of the Ganoderma tsuge fruiting body that's not actually developing. I mean, it's super cool. Okay, let's show you the other ones. Here's a beautiful example of that fan shape. And also you can see the concentric zones here. And then also the color moving um, toward the stalk here, you can see that it becomes more brick brick red or uh, yeah so as the as this mushroom matures all of this become or most of it becomes that color the stalk the stem color just as a note so you're seeing it as um, I'd say this is a pretty perfect specimen to harvest but it continues to mature which is still harvestable but anyway let's keep moving here you see an amazing cluster again, these beautiful mushrooms. And what I want you to notice though underneath is that they have pores. They do not have gills. These are part of the polyporaceae family. I'm just thinking, I want to make clear though, that this, this Ganoderma tsuge follows the hemlock trees, the tsuga canadensis trees. Um, so the range of that tree is the range of this mushroom. I think I said that, but I'm not sure. Now what I'd like to do is get my um, little pocket knife. This is my mushroom bag, and in my mushroom bag I've got my pocket knife and some paper bags and some wax bags and things like that. And I want to cut a couple of specimens so we can really, um, I can show you what it looks like, how to harvest, and what you're looking for, and we can inspect it a little bit more closely and also talk about how you prepare this um, for food or medicine. Come on over. So let's just cut it. Actually, maybe a little higher up there. I'm gonna flip it over and show you that this is a white, poor surface, as you know, and it discolors pretty quickly when you touch it. So you wanna note that as well. It turns a brown. This is such a young one. It's perfect and beautiful, ready to become soup or tea or tincture. Here's another beauty. <laughs> Put some wood growing into it. Well, actually it growing around the wood. So again, I'm just taking my pocket knife, cutting it off right there. Look at that gorgeousness. Yeah, it looks perfect. By the way, as this mushroom matures, this underside, this pore surface will darken. As a note. 
Are you feeling blessed by these jewels of the woodlands? I am. It's pretty amazing. So let's talk about how you're going to bring these into your life. First of all, if you find them, you want to make sure that they are um, in good shape, that they haven't uh, gotten moldy or funky. These are perfect specimens. And then these can go into the refrigerator and used up within a couple of days. Or you dehydrate them. How do you use them? How do I use them? I prefer to make a stock with them or a tea. And I do dehydrate them. I tend not to use them fresh. I cut them into strips or one to two inch pieces. And I will put that in the dehydrator set at 100 degrees until it's completely dry. Um, and then I store them. They're good for year, years even. And I take uh, a one to two inch piece and I'll put that into a quart of stock and simmer that for about an hour and up to eight hours or even longer. Um, I could also make an infusion with them. And again, I'm taking, um, I can mix it with other herbs as well and let it steep, covered tightly for about eight hours even. So it's a long steeped or a simmered water-based prep that I'm using. You can tincture these. We're not gonna get into that now. If we found these, at their younger stage, when they're even younger than this and they really are super tender, you can actually saute them and eat them. I haven't done that, but I know other foragers who have. Um, yeah, so Ganoderma tsuge, what's its medicine? Let's just remember, it's considered an immunomodulator. And what does that mean? It helps us adapt to stressors, to things that affect our immune system, anything from environmental toxins, um, to even nervous system stress and things like that. So this is the beautiful Ganoderma tsuge or the woodland medicine. Forgot to mention how you use this is regularly in small amounts for many, many months, many moons. The idea is that this is a food-like medicine in small amounts that you consume regularly to get its benefits. Okay, if you've enjoyed this lesson and you'd like more, Check out my new online course, Wild Food Health Boosters and Herbal Remedies at wildfoodhealthboosters.com. See you then.